Now, if you've been following me for more than five minutes, you know I have two passions, computers and cars. And uh, what's the best way to put them together? Well, you build a nice, kick-ass racing simulator. Now, you guys have seen that I'm sitting in the uh, GT Omega Art cockpit here. I've had it for, geez, I got December of 2014, actually. Um, yeah, a long time ago. Anyway, that's besides the point here. I had the Logitech G27 on here before and it just wasn't good enough. So the folks over at Fnatic, I reached out to them. They were willing to sponsor this video to say, yeah, go ahead and check out some of our stuff. What do you want? I got to pick it and now we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna take the racing simulator here to the next level. Now the base right here, the most expensive part of this entire kit. This thing runs about 600 bucks just for the base, no wheel on it or anything. Um, but this is responsible for making the wheel feel real. A lot of lower end steering wheels will just rely on motor resistance to make you feel like you're driving a car. And the problem with that is it just doesn't feel realistic because when you drive a car, you're driving a, a power assisted hydraulic steering rack, which has a very interesting feel about it. Uh, when the wheels start to lose grip and they start to, it starts to turn a little bit easier on you because as wheels lose traction, they become easier to turn. Um, that has to be somehow translated to the steering wheel in your hand to make you feel like that just happened in real life. And if you're driving a, a front wheel drive car, it's even more important to have a base that can actually translate all of that sort of feedback into the steering wheel, which is why it's called a force feedback. So that kind of leads you to the problem with the lower end steering wheels is they just rely on a cheap brushed motor to give you that sort of feedback. But the Club Sport V2 base right here has a direct sensor that's mounted on the steering axis, so it avoids a lot of the issues that are usually found on belt-driven wheels um, with motor-mounted sensors. And it's also completely metal uh, construction, belt-drive system with ball bearings, and it's very precise and has very, very uh, accurate feedback, which is what I was mentioning here, because it's, it's the hardest part about doing these kinds of videos is you can't feel what it is I'm trying to explain. But the best way to explain it is it feels incredibly realistic. Probably as realistic as you can get without it being a direct drive system here. But Fnatic actually sent out, or they actually set out to really build a belt driven system here that is going to feel as close to a direct drive system as you possibly can. Um, but obviously this is a lot cheaper to do it this way than with a direct drive. But the nice thing about the way they constructed this here, also too with the way the sensor is mounted and the type of brushless motor they're using, is there's absolutely no dead zone. Um, which has kind of been one of my biggest complaints is a lot of times with the lower end steering wheels, you have a, a little bit of a dead zone in there. So as you get out of that dead zone, it'll bounce back real hard and then you get this where it's bouncing back and forth. If you guys have ever taken a G27 and just kind of you know, let go of the wheel like that, it starts to bounce back and forth all crazy because of the dead zone. That doesn't happen with the steering wheel at all. But then again, considering the thing is about 600 bucks for just the base, it better do a pretty damn good job of it. Now we're gonna move on here to the hub because the hub is very, very important. As you guys saw, it is a quick release. It's got this big giant spring-loaded uh, actuator here so that you can mount it to the base right there or the servo base and have no problem switching out your wheel because you can actually set up and load out different wheels. The actual software and the USB controller is built into the hub, not necessarily the base. Although the base is kind of the main brain of everything, the hub is controlling it. So you can change out the hubs for different types of wheels. You can get yourself like an F1 wheel where all the controls are mounted onto the steering wheel. Or in my case here, I've got a GT3 cup car wheel with the Xbox One compatible hub. We'll talk about that in a second. Or you can even go with something super basic and it's just like an oval wheel hub, like, like old school NASCAR, not the newer NASCARs, which actually have buttons on the wheels. Um, but you can load this out depending on your game and just buy different hubs and different wheels and switch them out. Now, obviously that can get pretty damn expensive considering each one of these hub and wheel assemblies is about $400 in itself. But obviously since we're dealing with a GT Cup car here, I've got paddle shifters, which are all metal construction, by the way. You can, you can really crank on that and not feel like you're gonna break the damn thing because everything we're talking about today is full metal construction, which is huge because that's gonna really play a big part on long life. Now, I, I said a second ago that this is the Xbox One hub and some of you might've been like, what, when I said that? Um, but yeah, this is Xbox One compatible. So all the buttons you're gonna see on here, instead of just kind of being blacked out buttons like the non-Xbox compatible one, they're labeled left trigger, left bumper, X, Y, A, B, start, select, all that sort of stuff. And they're on the top right here as well. 
um, which means that obviously they're mapped to Xbox when you turn it on. But every single one of these buttons are also customizable in any of the programs that you play in, um, Assetto Corsa, iRacing, whatever, so that they can all be different things, start, windshield wipers, headlights, whatever. Um, so that's kind of neat. You've got all these extra buttons here that you can map. The other thing that's kind of neat is all of these are on metal arms and they come pre-configured so that the steering wheel, like I've got right here, can just mount onto it and not interfere with anything. You can actually rearrange these and move these around to be a little bit more um, customizable to however you want them to be. I just left it, quite honestly. I still no reason to move it around. But the reason why they also call this a universal hub is it's got six bolt pattern here that's very common to Momo, Sparco, um, NRG wheels and stuff like that so that you can actually change the steering wheel or don't even have to buy one of theirs if you don't want to or if you already have one to be any type of steering wheel on here that you want. And because these arms are customizable and you can move them around, chances are it's going to fit with any style wheel you want to put on there. So that's, I think, really, really cool is the fact that they are giving real world support to real world steering wheels. I just opted to get the leather Forza Motorsports uh, version on here. I'm not really a fan of the way the white Forza Motorsport shows that on there. I could black that out too if I want. So the size and weight though of the wheel that they sent me is actually accurate and true to form to a true GT Cup car. So that's pretty neat. As I'm sitting here, it's about the same size uh, and feel as it would be if I were in a true GT car. So, and it's also got a flat bottom, which is kind of nice. So it's not gonna be hitting my knees. Um, but anyway, let's move over to the shifter here because this is where, when I unboxed the thing, I actually said out loud to myself, holy crap, this thing just reeks of quality. And my wife went, it's that bad, hon. I was confused. I said, well, what do you mean? She goes, oh, I thought you were being sarcastic. I was like, no, this thing is actually pretty badass. I wasn't expecting it to be as big and heavy as it is. But it also comes with two different shift knobs. In fact, it comes with this ball style shift knob, uh, if I can get it off right here, which I happen to really like. And it also has a more elongated handle style shift knob so that depending on whichever sty style that you like most, you can outfit it and off you go. But what I thought was really interesting here is the fact that this is a seven speed manual shift knob with a lockout for reverse, which is kind of neat. You gotta push it down left and up for reverse. I guess it's very similar to a Volkswagen. Um, and other European style cars. But it's got a one through seven on manual. And then it's also got this little button right here, this little slider that you can push and convert this to an H pattern gated shifter to a sequential shifter. So if you're doing like rally cross games or any sort of race car or GT car that's got a sequential gearbox, you can switch this on the fly. You don't need two different types of gearboxes. It just becomes a sequential automatically. And then it springs back when you upshift and downshift. And you can map the 2GS or the sequential two gear shift to the paddles so that they both are the same. So if you have a paddle car or a sequential car, they both use the exact same thing. Or if you leave this in H pattern, you can use the shifters as the sequential. So I've kind of thought of everything there. You can really, really row through the gears on this thing and not worry about breaking it. That was one of the problems I had with my G27 was friends would get on there and try and power shift and shift in the gear really hard. The problem was I was terrified that they were gonna break my shifter. And a couple of times I think they actually came close. So that's gonna move us on now to the pedals. The pedals can literally make or break the driving experience. Get it? Break the, the driving, ex come on, I tried. I would rather have no pedals at all than have poor pedals. That was my biggest problem with the G27 was that all the pedals felt the same. The gas, the brake, and the clutch all felt identical. They were just spring-loaded, they were linear, they felt the same no matter where you pushed them, no matter what the condition of the drive was, they just always felt the same. And in a real car, it doesn't feel that way. The gas pedal's got a unique feel, the brake has a unique feel, and the clutch has a unique feel. So starting with the gas pedal here, um, I kind of, now these are fully adjustable. And the first thing I did was I actually switched out the, the regular red spring that comes with them for the included black spring, which is actually stiffer. So they actually give you two sets of springs that you can change in there to kind of already customize the feel. Now I chose to make these feel like Nizzy, um, my 370Z Nismo, if you guys didn't know. That's the car that I drive kind of hard when I want to go have some fun. So I wanted my sim rig to feel a lot like Nizzy does. So I was able to actually adjust this pedal spring for the gas pedal to feel a lot like Nizzy because it's an electronic throttle. Um, there's no cable on there. Uh, it was just a real linear feel and I was okay with that. Now the brake on the other hand, this is a 90 kilogram load cell brake. So already it takes some real force to push and it is adjustable on the preload. So you can make it feel stiffer 
or softer at the top of the pedal, however you want to make it feel. Now, as you guys know, brake pedals in real life are hydraulic. They are not linear. So a spring pedal for, for brake is terrible. It's a terrible way to try and make a racing simulator feel. It doesn't feel accurate whatsoever. This guy, on the other hand, when I'm braking, it feels very, very realistic. Now they also sent over their uh, damper, which can be put on either the brake pedal or the gas pedal, um, which allows you to have a hydraulic feel. So if you guys had a cable driven uh, gas pedal, then you could put it on the gas pedal and control the stiffness of the pedal and how hard it is to push, uh, giving a much more realistic feel. In my case here, I went ahead and put it on the brake pedal because I wanted to make it feel more like a true hydraulic brake. And boy, does it ever because you've got eight damper settings on here from no damper to, holy shit, you gotta stand on this thing with both feet to make it go. Now lastly, the clutch pedal feels very, very real because of this cantilever design they have in there. So it's not just a linear press, it's actually got this kind of a flip function in there, which makes it feel a lot like you actuated the clutch and then released it, rather than just having a real linear feel. So you know exactly where the clutch engages and disengages, makes things like double clutching a lot easier, and it just makes it feel a whole lot more realistic. One other thing worth noting that you might have actually seen in some of the B-roll there is both the gas pedal and the brake pedal actually have these little motors on there that are designed to give you force feedback in the pedal of things like loss of traction through over-throttling, which is the throttle uh, vibrator, if for lack of a better term, is gonna start going off if you're losing traction due to too much gas. Um, same with the brake. If you start locking up the wheels, the brake pedal is gonna start to vibrate. So if you wanna run a true setup with no brake assist, no stability control or any of that stuff and just do pure race car, you can get some actual feedback with the pedal what's happening rather than waiting to see how the car is responding going, oh, I've got no traction or oh, I've locked up the brakes. So you kind of know it because you can feel it in your foot before the car even starts to respond. So that's a nice little touch in there also. Um, but you might have noticed a reoccurring theme here of realism, and that is what Fnatic has really set out to do with this set. Now there's one piece I really want to review, but I don't have because they're actually back ordered on, and that is the handbrake. Because I could set it here like an e-brake to my right. I don't think that makes sense personally, because I would like to play around with some of the drifting and Assetto Corsa and stuff, which means I'm gonna want it to be up here more on the dash, set up like a hydro brake. Um, but again, that's another $100 part. Unfortunately, I can't do a review of that right now. It was back ordered when they sent this stuff and it's not available until the end of the month. Um, but I will be picking one up so that I can set that up and it plugs right into the pedals and allows me to be able to do a lot more controlled drifting by pulling a uh, hydro brake rather than having to try and do it all with the throttle. Um, which is kind of neat. Now this setup right here is not cheap. It's not cheap whatsoever. It's about 1500 bucks as you see it outfitted right now. So you've got to kind of be serious about sim racing to spend that kind of money on this. But boy, do I think it's worth every single penny. Now, is it the, the best system out there? No, absolutely not. Is it the cheapest? Heck no, not by a long shot. But I think it gives you a pretty good bang for the buck. And I know people aren't gonna to wanna to shoot me for saying 1500 bucks bang for the buck. Um, there are pedal sets out there that cost $1,500 by themselves. There are direct drive units that cost $2,000 by themselves for the steering wheel. You can easily spend $70,000 on a racing setup. So yeah, bang for buck at 1500 bucks, I think is a realistic term. Now it's not perfect. For instance, using the Xbox hub right here, whenever I turn it on, it defaults to the Xbox mode, which is really frustrating because I am gonna be spending 95% of my time playing it on PC. I haven't even tried Forza yet. I'm gonna try that in another video. Um, so every time I turn it on, it goes into the Xbox mode, which you can tell because it's got the green ring, and then I've gotta push these two buttons here to put it into PC mode, which is really annoying. I've gotta do it every single time. Now the documentation that comes with everything is actually very, very basic. Both the base and the pedals have a quick start guide, which simply is nothing more than showing you where to plug stuff in. It's only a couple pages because it's in several languages. And you also get uh, drill pattern templates here in case you're building your own rig out of wood or whatever else, so that you know where to drill so that you can mount either the 20 degree angled base right here, um, which goes onto the bottom of the base so you get the wheel kind of more upright, like a real column. Um, or you can mount it flat if you wanted, but that's a little less realistic in my opinion. It's because they don't want you to 
have an outdated manual. You have to go online, download the latest, latest PDFs, so you always have the most up-to-date manual, which actually I think is a good thing. I was trying to figure out why my wheel wouldn't show up, but that's because, like I said, it was booting in Xbox mode. And then I had to delete the driver and reinstall it because once I installed the driver before having this in PC mode, um, it didn't want to recognize it after that. So once I deleted the driver, put it in PC mode, then reinstalled the driver, it uh, pretty much saw it and had no problems from there. Other than that, it really wasn't that hard to set up. They actually have this exact setup already loaded into it so that it knows all the configs. And then all you've got to do is calibrate the wheel and the pedals and you're up and running. But all in all, guys, I couldn't be happier. This is a this is a very immersive product. And that was the whole point of me wanting this is because now that I'm using VR for my racing setup, I wanted something that was going to feel as real as what I was seeing. The problem I have with the G27, which I'm comparing it to because that's where I came from, was... I had VR on and I saw racing stuff all around me, but I had this little bitty wheel and this little plastic shifter and these terrible pedals, which really didn't make it feel very real. You guys like that? It just didn't make it feel very realistic. But now I've got much more, uh, my senses are being much more satisfied by what I'm experiencing here with the Fnatic Club Sport stuff versus what I had in the past. But again, 1500 bucks, guys, it's not cheap. Anyway, if you guys want to find some more information about this, check the description down below. You guys will see a link to Fanatic's website. Again, no kickbacks or affiliates. It's just, that's the source of where I got it from. Um, but I do actually have an affiliate code for GT Omega down there. If you guys want to, uh, you know, you guys can help support the channel. If you guys buy any new racing seats or cockpits or desk chairs or whatever, you can see the link to that down in the description. Um, actually save 5%. It's good in Europe as well as the United States. So I'm going to get out of here, guys. I know the video was longer than I normally make. There's a lot to talk about. It actually was like three products I was doing a review on. Um, but with that said, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to do some more racing. And uh, yeah, Jerry, I, I, you always give me a hard time about my, my setup. Well, I think, this is, uh, I think it's time to show once and for all who's the better sim racer. So if you guys want to see a showdown between Jerry and I and I racing, make sure you hit him up on Twitter. Say, hey, Jay says he's better than you. And I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I haven't put money on it. All right, guys, time to get out of here. As always, I'll see you in the next one.